are live on Facebook and you can drop your comments and your contributions because today we are talking about glaucoma. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Glaucoma is something that gives a lot of people you know, concern. concern and it's something that we definitely need to talk about today on tea or coffee. Of course, the phone line will be open very soon and uh, shortly, so please keep your dev devices close by so that you can call and contribute to the topic of the day. Okay, so we have our guest already in the studio. And I'm not going to pass it to you, so don't be scared. <laughs> I'm not scared, <laughs> trust me. Okay, <laughs> we have Dr. Simi Ajano in the studio. She is an optometrist and she'll be doing justice to the topic glaucoma. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Very well. Good to have, have you. Yeah. Thank you. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And so do you both. Thank, Thank you. you. So okay. glaucoma, right? Yeah, glaucoma. I, I know it's... Um, it's something that gives everyone concern, yes. an yeah. eye disease that causes damages and all. Yes. But as a professional, what is glaucoma? Let's, go, let's start from there. Okay. So glaucoma is a group of eye diseases. You can just specify it to one thing because one thing. there are a lot of things that lead to glaucoma. But the major thing is that it destroys the optic nerve. Yes. Now, what do I mean by the optic nerve? That's the part of the eye which sends information yes to okay. the brain okay so if it's destroyed or if it's damaged or a bit of it is tampered with then the way the brain is to interpret any message would be disrupted so glaucoma in sense destroys the optic nerve and then leads to blindness wow you get it yeah. yes and unfortunately glaucoma is irreversible meaning you can't whatever is damaged is damaged you can't go back it's not like you have an injury to your skin and then it heals and you're fine. No, glaucoma is gone and it's gone. And we call it the thief of the eye. Mm. Basically because um, you do not have any pain. Okay. You do not have any problems. You just realize that oh, your vision is dropping. dropping. And to some people, vision dropping doesn't mean much. They feel, oh, maybe if I get glasses, I'm fine. Or if I do one or two things, I'm fine. But then glaucoma, it's, it's usually noticed at the last stage where your wow. peripheral visions are completely Gone. lost. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Is it eye specific? When you say eye specific. Like is it, it just affects the eyes? Only? Yes, it just affects the eye. Okay. And you mentioned that it's a group, you know, so what yeah. are the groups? So there are, there are um, various things that could cause glaucoma. Okay. okay. It could be age related. It could be diabetic patients, high blood pressure patients, um, people with risk factor, family um, trait of glaucoma. Okay. Um, people who are short sighted, especially the really? high short sighted people. People. People you see um, when you look at their lenses, it's quite thick because the eyes are really okay. elongated. So they have the risk factor of um, having glaucoma. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So you did say that you they get noticed during the last stage. Yes. So what are those signs to look out for? Okay. Good. So signs to look out for. Now, you could understand the difference between signs and symptoms. Symptom mm -hmm. is what you, the patient, yeah. notices, and sign is what the doctor sees. So for signs, we look at various things. Now, according to a list, first we look at the pressure of the eye. Okay. There's a statistical marker of 10 to 21, okay. millimeter mercury. And um, so when you check that and it's above 21, then we know that we're suspecting for glaucoma. Realize I used the word suspect suspecting because there could be something we call ocular hypertension. Okay. It might not be glaucoma, but then the pressure in the eye is high. Okay. And also, um, after checking the pressure of the eye, we do a series of tests. Now, there's something we call ophthalmoscopy. Okay. That is looking at the back of the eye, the eye. to look at the retina, to look at the cup disc ratio. Is it normal? Is it fine? Is it enlarged? You know, and that gives an idea. So when it's enlarged, we know that there is glaucoma. If it's more or less small, then we know that things are fine in the eye. And also after checking um, pressure and also checking that, you, we do something called CVF, Central Visual Field mm -hmm. Test. Okay. That is to see how well you see peripherally. Okay. Because glaucoma in, in its own sense, you might be able to see, you might have the best vision. Reading a visual acuity chart, you have minimum of 6-6. That's okay. what you, yes, that's the normal thing you can read. 
And so a glaucoma patient would read 6.6 six and possibly go to 6.5, wow. which is even way beyond, beyond normal. Why? Because the central vision is fine. Okay. Now, glaucoma attacks the peripheral vision first. So more or less, you don't even know that you're not seeing you're things seeing, on your yes. peripheral sides. Ideally, when sitting down, I should know, oh, there's something here, there's something there. But then when you begin to realize that this is just how you see, so we call it tunnel vision. Okay. So you just see basically this way. Right. And then if you have to look at anything on your left or your right, right. you have to completely turn left or you completely turn right. Wow. Mm. You get it. Okay, I, I know you want to say yes. something, just want a second. So at the stage where um, the doctor suspects that there could be signs of glaucoma, what happens? Because you say that at the last stage, it's irreversible. irreversible. Yeah. yeah, so that's why we always advise that you check your eyes every six months. Oh, okay. If you could do every three months, that's basically fine because glaucoma gives no symptom. And so what we, the doctors, do is that when, once we see that there is glaucoma, we place on treatments. Oh. Okay. There are various treatments we could place on to lower the pressure, to open up the fluid. Most, in most cases, the issue about glaucoma is that the pressure in the eye is outshooting the normal. Okay. So what happens is surgically, we could open up a hole to let there be enough drainage. Okay. Sorry, when you say open up a hole, where? In the eye. <laughs> what? Yeah. That is scary. Okay. Wow, okay. That's done through operation, right? Yes, that's done through Surgery. operation. Okay. So we have um, two different operations you can do. We call it trabeculectomy. Okay. And then we have the um, selective laser trabeculoplasty. Hmm. Okay. Yes. So how does this operation, how do they affect the eye? All... all that the operation is just doing is to open up okay. space for the liquid to move freely in the eye. No side effects. No side effects. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the intraocular uh, pressure, yeah. that's the one that causes uh, the optic nerves, that damages the optic nerves. How can you reduce pressure? That so the, intraocular yes. pressure? So reducing intraocular pressure is where the surgery comes in. Okay. okay. Because when you open the holes, the drainage is opened and then the water can flow out oh. freely. So there is no um, compression or increase of water in a particular place. Okay. Do you get it? Yes. And then most times, it's not always um, surgery, surgery, surgery. There are times where you could use medications. No. And then what the medication does, it's either to lower the um, production of the liquid or to open the drainage. It depends on depends. what exactly is the positive factor in the eye. Okay. I know that once you know you have eye issues and very blurry visions or itchy eyes, you go to the pharmacist and you get an eye drop. Yeah. You know, so how does eye drops affect or um, improve risk of gly glaucoma? Glaucoma. So all the eye drops are for various functions. Okay. And it depends on what um, what particular eye drop you're getting. Okay. Now. The eye drops, the only eye drop that um, causes or has a risk to glaucoma are corticosteroidal eye drops. What do those treat? So those are, those are the ones that treat for maybe serious inflammations. Okay. okay. And so when the doctor prescribes that, we try to taper down how you use it. We could say, oh, you start using it um, three times a day or five times a day, and we begin to reduce it, oh, okay, for three days, you use it five times. Next three days, you use it two times. And then drastically taking you off the medication. But if you have to use it for a long period of time, yes, it could cause glaucoma. It could okay. cause glaucoma. All right, so talking about pressure, I, I, I want to know what, what causes this pressure. Okay. So the same way we have um, high blood pressure yes. in the body is the same way we have eye pressure. Now, in the eyes... There is liquid which helps to lubricate the eyes. Every time you blink your eyes, your eyes are being lubricated. Okay? Every blink you make, your eyes are being lubricated. And so, the liquid in the eye, it needs a space to drain out. It's like saying you have two glass cups and then, um, or a tap and a cup. So, we're, we keep pouring water into a cup. It gets full, yeah? Yes. But then, if there's a hole beneath the cup, it drains, it drains out. out. So that is how the eye is supposed to be. There should be water flowing in and water draining out. Okay. Now, the pressure increases when 
the hole is covered okay. and the water builds up. Oh. Do you get it? And there's no that, space for it to drain Yes, flow. there's no space for it to drain out. Because the ideal thing is for it to drain out and let more liquid be produced. Oh, okay. So it goes in circles in that form. Okay. Do you get it? Yes. Yeah. So at, at some point, you just talked about lubricants. Yes. Yeah. At, is it okay to use um, lubricants once in a while? Because I remember that sometime last year, I, I got tested and I got tested for inflammation okay. and I was told to use some lubricants. I used it for like three, three to four months and I stopped. Okay. So is it okay to use um, lubricants knowing that you need to keep the eyes um, just Moist. exactly? Moist. So is it what's, at what point should you use lubricant? At what point should you stop? So ideally, um, every medication you take should be given to you by a doctor. Doctor. Yes. And so usually lubricants come in when you complain of, oh, I have dry sensation or I feel like there's sand in the eye or I feel that there's stone or I feel there's a foreign body in the eye. And that is when we prescribe lubricants. All the lubricant does is to just lubricate the eye, make it wet so you don't have frictions in the eye. So, well, you could use lubricants as long as you want to. All it's just doing, it's, it's more like a placebo, okay. meaning it has no side, no effect. side effect. It's just lubricating the eye for you. Okay. Okay. See, so this uh, glaucoma really seems to be pretty serious because you don't even have symptoms and then you're not yeah. warning signs. So how often should we go for eye checkups? Because and how are we sure that these checkups will even save us from the you know impending glaucoma? <laughs> yes, because when you do, you see that we, uh, when you do checkups, you get to know if you are uh, or you're already it. prone or you already have glaucoma. Yeah. So um, eye checks should be done, like I said earlier. If you could do it every six months, okay. perfect. If you could make it three months, way, way perfect. Because remember I said it has no signs. Yes. I mean, it has no symptoms. No symptoms, yes. So ideally, you don't even know what's happening at the back of your eye. You don't even know. You just feel, oh, I'm seeing. I can see everything. I'm good to go. But then the doctor knows what they are seeing. seeing. Because what we look at is behind the eye. Do you understand yes. it? it? It's behind what you can see visually. We look straight to the retina, to the back of the eye. And then, obviously, if you go to a clinic where they do a comprehensive test, yes. you'll be able to know that, oh, okay. okay, I have glaucoma, or I don't have glaucoma, or I'm suspecting glaucoma. You know, so in the early stages, we don't say, oh, you're a glaucoma patient. Okay. No, we say you're a glaucoma suspect, meaning we suspect Specs. you to have glaucoma. So then you undergo the series of tests, and then the last test would be the... CVF would be an OCT, optical coherent tomography. That okay. is like a pictorial view, view of the back of the eye, of the retina. Okay. Seeing the eye, seeing the nerves. You do a test called pachymetry, just okay. to check the corneal thickness. Okay. If it's flat, if it's hard, if it's normal. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And so then the doctor can easily diagnose, diagnose and you. say, oh, yes, you have glaucoma. Oh, no, we would monitor you and all that. And then in most cases where we have um, patients who have glaucoma, okay. we usually advise for them to also do like a family routine check, check. because it's also genetic. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's genetic. Okay. But so, what if you don't know about, if, how would you know if it's genetic? What if uh, it just happened, your, your okay, how should I put it now? Genetic, that's your, your mom or your, okay. your mom's side. Uh, yeah. The justice. You know, sometimes people don't, people don't even know. Yeah, people yeah. are genetic. Don't know. Yes. And you know, we're, we're in a world where things, technology is evolving. Yes. We read a lot. We see a lot. Of we course. hear a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's why it's, sometimes it's good to ask questions. questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's key. It's good to ask questions. Because even medically, we, we ask a lot of questions. questions. And some patients are like, ah. Why are you asking me if I smoke? Why are you asking me if I do this? Why do I, you know, because, but then those are risk factors also. That's why we tend to ask, oh, do you smoke? Do you, but people think it's kind of harassing, but, if you, ask. you know. <laughs> okay, so that brings us to the risk factors. Yeah. Now, what are the risk factors of Yeah, glaucoma? so diabetic patients. That you mentioned. High sugar level. Yes. yes. Um, high blood pressure. Um, high myopes, those are short-sighted people who have the high, like it's extremely high. Okay. Um, um, genetics, like I said. Um, and then environmental factors also. You could, okay. you could never tell. The, the whole thing is we don't even know majorly. We just, that's why we call it a group of diseases. diseases. We can't say it's this 
it's this. Doesn't have a specific it's cause. It's not specific. Yeah, there are a lot of things that could cause glaucoma. Is it okay. age specific? Um, most times it's supposed to be age specific, okay. so 40 and above. 40, okay. Yeah. But above. then you could find um, people who are younger having it. Why? That's why I said genetics. Okay. So let's assume oh, someone is 50 who has glaucoma. Now she gave birth to a child, and um, unfortunately, it's genetic, and so the child has glaucoma. Glaucoma. Yeah, so we begin to monitor. We might not necessarily treat the child at that point. The child is being monitored because oh, okay. pressures might be normal. Looking at the back of the eye might be normal. But because we know the mom is at risk or has already, has already. had that in place, we try to monitor the child so that it doesn't get as worse as it should progress. Oh, okay. So just because uh, it has no... You know, I know some people that are short-sighted. Once you notice you're short-sighted, is that when you should cry for help? Um, it's a risk factor. Mm. Okay. So ideally, when you go to an eye clinic, the, the most important thing to be done is after doing a glasses, even before the glasses test is done, you are scrutinized. You are routinely checked for glaucoma. It's, it's like an everyday thing we do because this is something that it's, it's, you, can't, you can't give an excuse for it. For it As true. a doctor, if I don't do that, my license is at risk. Wow. Yes. It's at risk if I don't check, check the back of the eye. Because the person complaining about, oh, I can't see, I can't see, it might be a pathological thing and okay. not just a glasses Glass, thing. Yeah. There, must, there might be something behind the eye happening. It's not just everything. You have to, oh, glasses. Glasses. And glasses, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I would like to talk about um, what what should happen when you're already when you're diagnosed yes. of glaucoma. Mm -hmm. But we will do that after the break. We'd we'll okay. like to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more on glaucoma. Don't go away. Do you want more amazing content from us? All you just have to do is subscribe and don't forget to click the notifications button so that you can get notified when new videos are up.